The first great lie by John Kerry on March 13, 1969, was his claim that he had been wounded by an underwater mine. He claimed that he had gotten shrapnel in his buttocks and a minor contusion or bruise on his forearm. Because of the shrapnel in his buttocks from the underwater mine, he secured a Purple Heart and left Vietnam within a three-day period. The whole story is its just beyond us. There was absolutely no evidence of an underwater mine being detonated or multiple mines, as he's claimed. There was no B-40 or any other type of rocket attack. And there was only one, one mine blast, and the uh, carry boat was not uh, close enough. And he talks about shrapnel, and I've never heard of shrapnel from an underwater mine. If there was a mine under the 94 boat, how then was it able to tow the three boat out? John Kerry's boat, the Swift Boat 94, had actually received damage that was consistent with actually striking something in the water, not a mine. Had a mine blown up anywhere near John Kerry's boat, and we want to make the comparison that the damage we saw in this report was a mine, then th John Kerry's boat would have been shredded. These boats were made of aluminum. In fact, what actually happened is he wounded himself earlier that morning. How do we know that? The first way we know it is from a variety of eyewitnesses who saw him toss a grenade into the rice and actually wound himself. In the Boston Globe biography, Jim Rassman says that's how John Kerry wounded himself on that day with his own grenade thrown into some rice. We know from recent interviews of Jim Rassman this year that Jim Rassman has said that John Kerry wounded himself by putting a grenade into some rice and getting a minor rice wound. His actual ledger is quoted in his own biography on page 313 and 317. He indicates he was wounded from this grenade earlier in the morning, had nothing to do with the water mine at all in his own authorized biography. There's never been a water mine in the history of the world that ever gave a guy a rice wound in his fanny. We were going to take him to get medical attention for supposed wounds that he had received that day. I looked at the man, I can tell you to this day, there was not a speck of blood anywhere on his uniform, nor was he looked in any way impaired at all. At this point, when I can clearly see John Kerry, I see absolutely no sign of any injury. There's no blood on his uniform. He is completely ambulatory. He has complete motion of all his limbs. He appears to be totally unconcerned about his own health at that point. Why did it matter that John Kerry lied about the source of this rice wound and attributed it to hostile fire? It mattered because John Kerry applied for and got his third Purple Heart on this basis and left Vietnam within three days, some 243 days early, leaving everyone else there to serve out their full, honest tours of duty. Instead of one man left behind, the true story of that day is one man left.